Tonight's reading is Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 25. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The most important day of the festival of the Passover for Jews is the 14th day of the month of Nisan. This is the day when in the book of Exodus the Israelites were asked to kill the first Passover lambs at the time when they were being delivered from Egypt. And in Jesus' time, this had become the time when the Passover lambs were slaughtered in the temple and also in homes. We have to remember that um, in the Jewish way of doing things, days began in the evening. And so uh, it was the Thursday of that week, as the sun was setting, when Jesus uh, asks his disciples to prepare the Passover. They're going to begin the 14th day of Nisan by eating the Passover meal together in a place which has been prearranged. And at the same time that they're doing that, all over Jerusalem, families and groups of men would be celebrating the Passover together. And there would be ceremonies going on in the temple as well, which included the slaughtering of Passover lambs. So Jesus meets with his disciples and this is supposed to be a happy occasion, an occasion when they behave like kings because they recline at the table. But things don't begin very well because the first thing that happens when they arrive is that there's no one there to wash their feet after the long day that they've had. And Jesus himself offers to wash their feet. And this isn't an easy occasion for them because the disciples feel that this man should be their king, not the one who is taking the place of the lowest slave. And Jesus has a lesson to teach them as a result of that. And when they get to the meal, uh, when they should be celebrating God's deliverance from Egypt, and rejoicing at the greatness of their God, Jesus looks around and says, One of you, 
is going to betray me. And he knows who it is. And they all begin to wonder whether it's them. But this is not really how a Passover meal ought to work out. And we understand from uh, the other Gospels that uh, at a certain point in the meal, Judas, who is the one who will betray him, leaves the meal, although the other disciples don't necessarily understand what it is that he's going away to do. Jesus then, <clears throat> when he should be talking to them about events in the past when God delivered Israel, begins to talk about other things. He begins to pass bread round and to say, this is my body, which is broken for you. He then also takes the cup, not just a cup, but probably the cup reserved on the table for Elijah, which was usually untouched. Jesus takes that cup and passes it round amongst these disciples. He wants them to share in this and begins to talk, not about what God has done in the past, but about the new covenant which God is about to bring into being. And they would have understood something of what he was talking about because this was something that the prophet Jeremiah had predicted hundreds of years before, that there would be a new covenant with the house of Israel, which would be about the forgiving of sins, the bringing of an end to sin, and a time when everyone would know God intimately and their sins and iniquities would be remembered no more. And so these disciples begin to get an idea that things are coming to a head. They've probably guessed that already from Jesus' behaviour on Palm Sunday and then the following day when he drives the traders out of the temple. But this is not a Passover meal in the sense that they had got used to it. There was something different about it and there was a sense that something new was going to happen. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus spoke to them for a very long time about some of the things that were going to happen. He was answering their questions. And so it was quite late at night that they leave the Passover meal and go out eventually to the Garden of Gethsemane. But what they've participated in is actually the first communion service. Uh, this new covenant meal is the meal which is left to the church as something to celebrate. And uh, Jesus shares that with the men who are going to be at the foundation of the new work that he is doing, the foundational figures of the church. And the intention of the sharing of bread and wine, of the communion service, is that it should be a focus of the church's unity. Now the shame is, of course, that over many hundreds of years, the communion service has often been anything but that. It has been a focus of division for the church and something which has separated one Christian from another. Interestingly, we aren't going to be able this year to celebrate communion at Easter. And the situation that we find ourselves in means that uh, we can't gather together to do that, not even on Easter Sunday, which is a sad thing. But perhaps one of the things we ought to take away from that is to remember that it was always intended as a focus for the church's unity. And when this is all over and we begin to meet again and to share communion regularly in our churches, perhaps we can begin to do so with a sense that this needs to be a focus of unity amongst those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, and that as we begin to celebrate communion again, we should do so with that in mind. And the prayer, unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, should be our prayer first and foremost. Let us pray. Lord God, you sent your Son into the world, 
and before his hour had come, he washed his disciples' feet. You had given all things into his hands. He had come from you and was going to you. And what did he do? He knelt down on the floor and washed his friends' feet. He was their teacher and their Lord, yet he washed their feet. Lord God, help us to learn from his example. Help us to do as he has done for us. The world will know we are his disciples if we love one another. Strengthen our hands and our wills for love and for service. Keep before our eyes the image of your Son, who, being God, became a servant for our sake. All glory be to him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.